I'm bored. Let's create some Bridgerton hairstyles. Dearest gentle reader, this is just my beetroot dye paper. I've just finished binge watching all of Bridgerton season two. In two days, I practically didn't get anything else done. Um, so now I feel like I have to get back all of that wasted time by actually doing something. Bridgerton is fascinating for so many different reasons. If you haven't watched it, please do so. It is so surreal. I will say people in the 1800s were really horny, but they were also really beautiful. If there was ever a television show made for me, it is that one. I've never seen a show with so many intricate hairstyles. I applaud all of the hairstylists and hair creators and wig creators on that show because the level of detail in all of the characters were unreal. I loved it. It spoke to me. And while I cannot replicate the sexual tension, the gorgeous dresses or the massive rumors and gossip that follows all of the ton, I can recreate some of the hairstyles. I'm not entirely Bridgerton ready, so... It does have a very similar coloring to Daphne's hair, which is perfect because that is whose hairstyles I'm going to be creating. I know Daphne wasn't really a main character this season, but there is still something about her hair that is just... The first one that I'm going to be creating is the hairstyle that she wore in the second episode, I believe, when she and her family went to Aubrey Hall and they all played a little game of Pall Mall. Pall Mall? Pall Mall. Gorgeous. Let's start. It's a very classy Bridgerton look and it's very half up half down moment. It is piled kind of on top of her head in a very very elegant but swirly bun. And also in Bridgerton fashion it is adorned with flowers. I'm gonna do my best to replicate it and create something very similar to what uh, Daphne, this is Daphne Bridgerton, or in season two. Starting off by sectioning off the front portion of the hair, this is something that is very commonly seen in most Bridgerton hairstyles. I pull up the back part of the hair to create the iconic half up, half down look. Throughout the entirety of the hairstyles, hairspray is going to be your best friend. Whenever creating more intricate hairstyles, I prefer using this elastic with two hooks on the end rather than the traditional elastic band. One of the favorite things that I like doing to better ease my hairstyles is I like to create a little loop at the end of my ponytail so that as I'm rolling it up, I have all the hair kind of in one solid piece rather than having hair kind of going everywhere. This makes it so much easier when I come to create this kind of a shell bun on top of my hair. At this point, it is really just kind of fiddling with different types of wave pins and bobby pins to create a smooth kind of a shell bun. I curl all of the front portion here. This is just mainly to aid me when it comes to creating that very iconic pulled back Bridgerton look and creating a very kind of a seamless curve as it kind of curves along my head and along the bun. Once again, pinning that into place using hairspray where necessary and it's time to create the kind of swirls that is very iconic. I'm using wave pins to just temporarily kind of keep them in place as the hairspray sets, then I'll be able to remove this and I create the same sort of a thing, same sort of a maneuver on the other side. I would always recommend using kind of an easy light hand rather than very kind of jerking the hair around. In the end, I think it looks cute. The final part of the hairstyle is to just curl all of the remaining hair in the same direction. I'm keeping the curls kind of tight, but more towards the end of the hair because I want to keep the top half of the hair kind of smooth and straight. Once I've curled it all, it is time to just kind of brush it out, form it into the very iconic Bridgerton ringlet, and it just brings the whole look together. Finally, as with all hairstyles, they always have these kind of like flowers in their hair. Here. I absolutely love it. I just place a couple in the bun, curl up the fringe, and that is the entire first hairstyle. I think it is beautiful, I think it's iconic, and I think it is very, very deft.
one of the cutest and gentlest hairstyles in the entire show probably one of my favorites i love it so much it's giving me more rapunzel vibes or belle from beauty and the beast that's what it's giving me this is the first look it is so elegant it is so posh it is so very daphne bridgerton she had kind of an awkward fringe in season one but i feel like her fringe really came together in season two hairstyle number two this is the hairstyle that daphne wears for anthony's wedding day which never really happens but it is very cute it is like a high bun but it still features the bridgerton curl the very regency curl it is beautiful it is sophisticated it is elegant it is everything that i love about hairstyles they are gorgeous i'm going to be using some very interesting ways to build ball anytime you see that in shows there is usually something to prop it up usually these are something like donuts or very condensed nets i do not have that so I might use something a bit less conventional, but hopefully it'll still work. So let's start. The second Bridgerton hairstyle, another favorite of mine. I start by simply dismantling the previous hairstyle, brushing it all out, and I'm sectioning out that singular ringlet that Daphne has. My best guess is that this was actually formed by placing an extension in the actual bun. Um, however, my hair on this wig would not have been long enough, so this is my next best alternative. I'm just pulling all the remaining hair up into a kind of a high ponytail, once again using the hooked elastic to create a very tight, taut ponytail. Here comes the unconventional bit. I did not have a hair donut or a hair net, so I used up this crumpled piece of paper to build bulk and volume into my hair bun. I just poked a hole through it and I'm going to be using it as though a traditional hair donut to build volume for the actual bun. I'm sectioning off a bit of hair from the center of the bun so that I can create a couple different things. I then go ahead and seal the donut by placing an elastic around the base of it. I pull the hair to conceal most of the white bits and it's time to start building all of these swirls. I start by curling the two singular bits of hair and I start molding this onto the bun. It doesn't really matter if the white shows for the time being because it will be covered by all the rest of the hair later. Once again I'm securing this in place temporarily with wave pins so it's fine if they stick out and it's time to start collecting the rest of the hair, piling it onto my hair again with a very very gentle hand and letting the hair kind of fall into place on its own. I also took this one piece and just simply did a rope braid on it because it is one of the braids that Daphne has in her hair throughout the wedding hairstyle. I poke some more pins in place and that is it for the bun. Same thing for the front of the hair as we did for this first hairstyle, just again very loose hand pinning it in place where I see it fits and again just letting the hair kind of fall into place on its own. I curl up the last bit of the hair, the little ringlet, clip it in place while I add in the iconic little flowers. This time I used roses, just gently place them into the bun and that is it. I released the ringlet, brushed it out, brushed out my fringe, arranged it, and that is the iconic Daphne wedding look that she wore for Anthony's fake marriage. for a queen, I think, rather a duchess. Although the queen's hairstyles were one of the most insane, if I do say so myself. This is it, this is the second hairstyle, one of the most beautifully intricate wedding updo. There's that classic beautiful bun element, but you still have the very cute Regency ringlet. <clears throat> Assuming Daphne wouldn't have had as many piercings as I do. Boom. Highly encourage you to watch Bridgerton both seasons one and two. Both of them are very, very heady and lusty and gorgeous and absolutely filled to the brim with everything you want to see in a series. If you enjoyed this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. It makes me feel good and it makes all of this worthwhile. And if you truly enjoyed my company, do press the subscribe button. Join the Stellar fam. Let's learn something new together. As always, my beautiful babies, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go and I will see you in my next video. Bye!